Okay, so it is 11.17 in the morning on Friday, September 16th. And in about 43 minutes, we will be starting the Brandon Sanderson 24-hour readathon of The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Stormlight Archive series, which is one of his most popular series, I think, to date. It is one of the kind of top tier stories that people talk about when it comes to reading Brandon Sanderson. I have really no idea what this is about. I have no clue what even the synopsis of this is. But my goal is not to finish this because this is over a thousand pages. I am not looking to finish this in 24 hours. There is no way. I do not have the time to be able to do that. My goal though is to get through the first maybe couple hundred pages over the course of the day, which that is even going to possibly be stretching it because of the fact that um, I tomorrow am hosting some friends over for my husband's birthday because today's my husband's birthday, but tomorrow we are doing the party. My husband's going to be out with his parents and maybe some friends and they're going to go to a casino. So I'm probably going to have most of the evening myself. Um, but at the very least, I would like to try to get through the first maybe couple hundred pages because I scheduled that in with my reading schedule. I could probably get through the first like 294 pages of this um within 24 hours that is not recognizing though that i don't have access to the audiobook the audiobook is not on script i don't have it through my library i don't really want to purchase it through audible because i really don't want to have to spend you know a lot of money on it because i think that the audiobook for this is a little bit expensive so i'm relying just on the ebook of this that i have and i'm a little concerned about that because i really for one enjoy the brandon sanderson audiobooks that there are for his book also with high fantasy it's a lot harder for me to get involved in the story when i'm not listening to the audiobook so we'll kind of see how this goes i don't know whether or not it's going to work or not um if i'm going to enjoy it as much without the audiobook but it is what it is i have to do what i got to do so uh, we're kind of just doing that for right now, but I've got about 40 minutes until that starts. Uh, it is basically going to start during my lunch hour. So I think that during my lunch, I'm going to eat and read that out in the living room. My husband did take the day off from work today for his birthday. So he is home and I'm going to go sit out in the living room with him and start reading that. So that's going to be it for me for right now. And I'll check in with you guys later today when we have started the readathon and let you guys know how far I get by the end of my lunch. Hey guys, so it is quarter after two in the afternoon. I hadn't had a chance to um, update you guys on the reading. So I did read the prelude to The Way of Kings and the prologue. Wow. So the prologue by itself was like bombastic, guns blazing, or swords swinging, I guess. <laughs> but um, the prelude talks about how thousands of years before, like, 4,500 years ago, before the beginning of the story, or at least before the prologue, there was this set of kings or set of rulers who basically like came together and they said that they could no longer rule the kingdom and they kind of had to leave things to themselves, basically like disbanding an entire group of, of people who had some kind of power. It, it, I'm not really clear on what that is as of yet. And then the prologue, we watched this man named Zeth who... I don't know whether or not he's considered a mercenary. He acts like he's a mercenary of some kind at the very least, but he goes into this stronghold of a kingdom. Uh, he goes into the palace and he kills a bunch of guards left, right, and center. And then he goes and fights the king of Alethi, I believe. And basically it's for a specific purpose. Like he had to kill him uh, because it was stopping something from happening. But then the king says to him to tell his brother that he has to remember the words of something. He says that his brother has to find the most important words a man can say, um, which I don't know what that means. I don't know anything about what that is. Um, Zeth, I don't know if we will see again, uh, because this was the prologue, which was some time before the main events of the story, but at the very least we know that the first full part of this book is going to be following Kaladin and Shala, I think is their names. Uh, Kaladin, I have heard a lot of people say, is like one of their favorite characters from any of Sanderson's work. 
So I'm excited to read about him and he is I think more of the main character in the story if we were to pick like one person as like the main character. Similar to like the, the Wheel of Time for instance where like you have Rand as the ultimate main character but then you have like perspectives of like a bunch of different people involved in the world and that he's connected to and all these different things. Uh, but I believe Kaladin is the main one in this series and I think that this is going to play on some kind of like impending either apocalypse or war or something. That's kind of the vibe I got from what the prelude said was that the reason that the, the rulers like decided to disband and go away was because of something that they were trying to prevent and they couldn't prevent it and so they kind of had to leave everybody to themselves and the way that the king that zeth kill has said something had said basically that his brother needs to find the most important words a man can say um i think that's going to have something to do with what the overall story is going to be about where there's going to be those words are going to be something really important in terms of either saving the world or destroying it or whatever but i don't even really know and i like i said i never read the synopsis of this so I guess let's just look it up real quick because I have no idea and I should have looked at this a while ago, but looking at the synopsis from Goodreads, it says, Roshar is a world of stone and storms. Uncanny tempests of incredible power sweep across the rocky terrain so frequently that they have shaped ecology and civilization alike. Animals hide in shells, trees pull in branches, and glass retracts to its soil soilless ground. Cities are built only where the topography offers shelter. It has been centuries since the fall of the ten consecrated orders known as the Knights Radiant, but their shard blades and shard plate remain. Mystical swords and suits of armor that transform ordinary men into near invincible warriors. Zeth was one of those. I think he had what was called a shard blade. And the King of Alethi also may have had one. Men trade kingdoms for shard blades. Wars were fought for them and won by them. One such war rages on a ruined landscape called, uh, called the Shattered Plains. There, Kaladin, who traded his medical apprenticeship for a spear to protect his little brother, has been reduced to slavery. In a war that makes no sense, where ten armies fight separately against a single foe, he struggles to save his men and to fathom the leaders who considered them expendable. Bright War Dalinar Cullen commands one of those other armies. Like his brother, the late king, he is fascinated by an ancient text called the Way of Kings, Dalinar may be the brother that was mentioned in the prologue. Troubled by overpowering visions of ancient times and the Knights Radiant, he has begun to doubt his own sanity. The Knights Radiant, I think, was the people that we learned about in the prelude. Across the ocean, an untried young woman named Shalin seeks to train under an eminent scholar and notorious heretic, Dalinar's niece, Jasna. Though she genuinely loves learning, Shalin's motives are less than pure. As she plans a daring theft, her research for Jasna hints at, hints at secrets of the Knights Radiant and the true cause of the war. The result of over ten years of planning, writing, and world building, The Way of Kings is but the opening movement in the, of the Stormlight Archive, a bold masterpiece in the making. And then there's a quote that says, Speak again the ancient oaths, life before death, strength before weakness, journey before destination, and return to men the shards they once bore, the Knights Radiant must stand again. Okay, so yeah, I, this was actually what I was hoping for in terms of anything to do with this was that there was going to be some kind of war going on. Um, also, a trope that I really enjoy that I was looking for because I'm looking to use this for a Bogoklathon prompt in the month of September uh, is the fact that there's a ca character, Kaladin, who um, one of my favorite tropes is when somebody uh, basically goes from a situation where they're underestimated and ends up becoming like a big powerful character or warrior which i do believe kaladin ends up doing over the course of the series if i am rem remembering what people have said about this series correctly um so that's a trope that i really love so i can definitely use this for bogoplathon which is perfect um but yeah this sounds really interesting so in terms of the cosmere i'm going to assume that the shard blades and other like shard related items they have to do with something i believe in terms of the shards that we learn about in the overall cosmere because if you're not familiar with the overall cosmere by this point if you've been participating in the brandon sanderson read along with brandy from books of brandy shanae and brief and brief should read we basically learned in the process of reading through mistborn through one of the short stories we had to read which i believe was 
oh gosh, what was it called? It was one of the, it was the, it was basically the bridging point between Mistborn Era 1 and Mistborn Era 2. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I will list it here if I can, if I can find the information. Basically, we learned that the Cosmere in totality is comprised of several systems that are all ruled by different shards or basically pieces of like an overarching like entity um and at one point the entity had basically like combusted and shards were sent to these different systems and they then had ruling over those different systems mistborn has two and i believe most of the systems if not all of them have two shards that either will be fighting to the death, which we saw a lot of within Mistborn, uh, Era 1 specifically, and there's a lot of other things that kind of tie into that. We haven't really seen much in terms of the shards with the other books after Mistborn Era 1. They weren't really mentioned much in Warbreaker, they weren't really mentioned much in Elantris. There was, there's like some theories that we've kind of been building on over the course of time though, but this is probably the first book we've seen in a while that mentions anything about the shards, because I would be willing to bet that in Roshar specifically, which is another system, it's one of the systems of the main Cosmere, is that the shards that control the system or that are ingrained in the system from the big entity have somehow created these kinds of weapons through their essence, through their actual maybe physical pieces of some kind, which that would lead to a lot of interesting questions about where exactly in like Elantris and Warbreaker those are coming into play. And now my question becomes, if going back to Warbreaker, does the color magic that they have in Warbreaker have something to do with the fact that a shard is ingrained in that system? And again, we already talked about the fact that it may be something similar to what we saw in Mistborn with the fact that in the Mistborn world there was no real color. It was very uh, gray and drab and like I wonder if the color magic that there was in Warbreaker, like it's if it's opposite of what Mistborn had, like if it's a direct opposite of some kind, or if at one point in Mistborn there was color and then something happened where all of that was lost. That's like another theory that we kind of were thinking about. Um, but I'm gonna be interested to see where exactly this goes because this is, I think, another story where like a lot of people who have read this series are saying like this is the most comprehensive look at the Cosmere and how like it seems to be the real crux of a lot of the different systems coming into play at one time, um, at least when you get further into the series, I think. But either way, this sounds like it's going to be really cool. And again, it hits on one of the tropes I was looking for uh, for Bogoplathon, which makes me very happy. Um, but yeah, I'm currently, like I said, through the prelude and the prologue. And I'm currently on page 25 of the first chapter, which is called Storm Blessed. So I will be getting to reading more of that here in a little bit. Uh, I have a little bit of work I got to do here, though. I just got an email for something that I need to do. Uh, but then, like I said before, I will be basically reading most of this evening. Today's reading goal, I need to get to page 148. And then tomorrow, I need to get 146 pages of this read before noon, which I don't know if it's possible exactly. Like, I will probably more than likely over the course of the day Saturday still be finishing that up um, because I got a lot going on tomorrow. I have to go get groceries tomorrow. I have to do a lot of filming and I have to prepare for um, Robert's birthday party. So I don't know if I'm going to get to that goal tomorrow, but I should be able to get to my goal for tonight especially. But I can already tell this is going to be a really hard on me because it was really hard for me to read through um, the first two chapters because of the fact that like I don't have the audiobook, it's a high fantasy, there's a lot going on at one time, so I'm already like a little flustered with a lot of the information, but I got a bit a good enough grasp on what happened to like tell you guys that like this is what happened kind of thing. So that's nice, but I'm a little sad I don't have the audiobook because I really want the audiobook, but it is what it is. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get back to doing some work. We will see where we get with that. Hey guys, so yes, I'm parked. I am not moving anywhere. I just came out of the mall because I was today gonna be doing grocery shopping and stuff before uh, Robert's birthday party and I needed to go to the bookstore because I was gonna pick up a copy of Monstrous, the newest volume that just came out on Wednesday, but the bookstore that I use does not have it, unfortunately. Um, it said on the website that they had three available, but it looks like they're either 
already purchased or they just don't have any you know out on the floor right now and i also had a 25 dollars hot topic gift card that i wanted to use up today uh because of the fact that i was going to be out and i am going to be out here again tomorrow with my mom and my sister because my mom wants to buy me a new internet interview outfit uh because i have two interviews next week um but it was also just a free excuse for us to go and hang out and stuff because my sister was going to be home um but yeah so I had last night got to my reading goal faithfully for Friday. I got through the first 148 pages of The Way of Kings um, and I really am liking it. And then the, today I only had time to really get through another like not quite 40 pages, like 33 pages or so. And that's just been at least before noon while I've been out driving and stuff and walking around and I also went and grabbed a matcha milk tea from the, my boba place that I love to get boba from. But, um, so that's going to basically be it for this 24-hour readathon vlog. I will be reading more of The Way of Kings and finishing up, getting to my reading goal today, which is to get to about page 295, I think. I'm just not going to be able to get to it because it's going on like noon right now, and so I'm basically done for the 24-hour-a-thon, the essentially. Um, but I will be getting to about 295 today, and then... Um, finishing up the rest of the week so just wanted to end the vlog here so thank you guys so much for joining me today if you guys did enjoy this video please do give it a big thumbs up and if you'd like to participate in the read along for the last few books that we are doing which we're reading through basically the entirety of the stormlight archive to round out the cosmere uh essentially what there is now i'll leave information for it down in the description for you guys as well as brie and brandy's channels because they are the ones that are hosting it um which i loved you know doing this entire year it's been so fun and if you haven't already and you'd like to be and would like to see more content like this Go ahead and hit that button down below and subscribe to become an owlet in our flock. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.